thank you CNN for this great honor. Um, I would also like to thank all the people who are involved in the selection process. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so that's the title of my talk. So imagine a world without cancer. Um, it's beautiful, isn't it? No pain, no suffering, no fear of losing loved ones to cancer. Well, the good news is we are, we are much closer to making this a reality than ever before. And I believe that the answer to achieving this is in cancer immunotherapy. How? Let me show you a short movie. Here, a cancer cell is getting attacked by an immune cell called T cell. And this possibility of harnessing our own immune system to target tumors is the future of cancer therapy. Indeed, if you pick up any leading journal or a magazine, they have featured cancer immunotherapy as a breakthrough or something that has a potential to cure cancer. But there are several challenges that have been identified that need to be overcome in order to uh, realize the full potential of cancer immunotherapy. And my lab currently works on addressing those challenges. But before I go into that, I would like to share my journey that led to my current work in cancer. So I'm from a, a small city in a western state of Maharashtra in India. My initial education was in a local language, the language you might have uh, seen in the list before. Uh, in fact, the first time I encountered English was during my undergraduate education at Institute of Chemical Technology in Mumbai. It was a great learning experience. I learned how to synthesize molecules and also scale it up to a full-fledged production plant. But I was more interested in understanding how these molecules behave in biological systems, and that is when I joined University of Cincinnati, where I worked on developing glycan engineering platforms. Uh, I developed uh, these glycans that could be used to in, uh, address or um, uh, probe interesting biological question. But uh, during my graduate studies, I developed interest in not only designing molecules to probe interesting questions, but also can it be used for therapeutic applications. So during my postdoctoral studies, um, I, I worked on developing nanoscale approaches for cancer immunotherapy applications at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital. And last uh, couple of years, I've been working on developing nanoscale approaches uh, as an independent faculty at Harvard Medical School uh, for therapeutic immune modulation in cancer. And uh, from next week, I'll be joining uh, University of Massachusetts at Hamish, where I'll be working on developing uh, nanoscale platform technologies for uh, therapeutic immune modulation in cancer. Now, as I previously explained, uh, there are several challenges that need to be overcome in order to fully add, uh, in order to fully realize the potential of cancer immunotherapy. And one of the biggest challenge is that this immunotherapy drug works in only small patient population. For example, one of the drug called anti-PD-1 antibody that activates the T cells uh, that kills the, uh, the cancer cells are shown to be effective only in 20% of the population. Now the question is what happens to this 80%, remaining 80% of the population and why don't they re respond? It turns out that tumors dominantly suppress anti-tumor immunity through various mechanisms. And that need to be overcome in order to make sure that we get these remaining patients to respond. And my lab currently works on uh, exactly addressing those challenges. So just to outline, we are trying to address two important questions in cancer immunotherapy. How do we overcome tumor-induced immune suppression by developing nanoscale approaches that can not only activate immune anti-tumor immunity, but can also lead to tumor regression. And the second question is, can we develop uh, imaging platforms that can allow us to in real time monitor if the patient is working or not? And that is something that I would be um, uh, talking about today. Now the question comes is, why do we need to monitor the response early on? As I previously said, only limited patient populations respond to these cancer immunotherapy applications. So if we can identify patients that are not responding early on, we can then switch them to a different uh, treatment regimen. Now, developing these platforms for cancer immunotherapy, there is, a, there is one, uh, one big challenge, and that's called pseudoprogression. So what, what does that mean? Uh, that will I explain in the next slide. So using a conventional chemotherapy uh, drug, if, there is a, uh, if the patient is responding, there'll be a decrease in tumor volume which should be considered as uh, the patient is uh, responding to the tumor treatment. Whereas if the patient is not responding, there will be an increase in tumor volume over time, and it will be considered as disease progression. So it's simple. If there is a decrease in tumor volume over time, the patient is responding. If there, if the, there is an increase in tumor volume over time, the uh, patient is not responding. Whereas in case of cancer immunotherapy, 
if the drug is working, the immunotherapy drug activates the uh, immune cells. And these activated immune cells then flock to the tumor. And because of this heavy infiltration of the immune cells, there's a bulking up of the tumor. And this bulking up of the tumor can be easily misconstrued as disease progression. So currently, there are no techniques that can differentiate between disease progression and pseudo progression. In fact, current uh, clinical guidelines says that if there is an increase in tumor volume after initial treatments, you consider it as a pseudo progression and keep giving the treatments uh, to the to the patients till you at a later time point till you figure out if actually it is progression or if it is uh, the patient is responding. So that is something that we want to work on is differentiate between this is progression and pseudo progression. The problem is current imaging techniques have limitations. For example, if you directly just measure the tumor volume, it takes much longer time in order to identify if the tumors are responding or not. Uh, phase CT, which is currently a gold standard in monitoring the immune response, are not really effective in telling you early on if the tumors are responding or not. So there are these limitations that can uh, hamper the uh, development of imaging techniques for immunotherapy application. So consider a new paradigm where we develop a technique that can not only deliver a drug specifically to the tumor, thereby activating the risk immune response, but can actually tell you in real time whether the drug is working or not. To go one step further, if you can actually differentiate between resistant tumor and sensitive tumor, that would be really critical for identifying patients that are not uh, responding early on. So we, are, we, we have developed this platform technology that can not only allow us to deliver a drug, but can also tell us in real time if the drug is working or not. We have also shown that you can use it to differentiate between resistant tumor and sensitive tumor. So what is this platform technology? We have a stimuli responsive polymer construct where we conjugate a drug to the polymer construct and also activatable imaging agent. Now activatable imaging agent is in a, uh, in a off condition. We optimize the drug and the activatable imaging agent ratio in a way that they self-assemble to a nanoparticle. The idea is that when this nanoparticle internalizes into the tumor, if it activates the immune response, there will be a physiological changes in the tumor. And because, those, uh, because of those physiological changes, it can activate the imaging agent. So what it means that if the patient is responding uh, and, you know, uh, in, in the, and there is an immune response, we would be able to in real time know uh, whether uh, there is any uh, drug working or not. Whereas if there is no immune response, there will be no activation of the imaging agent and we will not see any, uh, uh, any response and we can say that the patient is not responding. Now, we wanted to first va validate this platform for uh, a very established chemotherapy drug. So we conjugated a chemotherapy drug here and a near infrared dye based uh, activatable imaging agent. We can, we can use this for monitoring the response uh, in, in live mice. And when we uh, injected this uh, into three different doses and then imaged it at different time points, the idea was that uh, then we will be able to see if the patients are, uh, patients are responding or not in real time. We first started with control nanothermostics, which had only the activatable imaging agent and did not have any drug. The idea was to see if we get non-specific activation of the imaging agent. And when we saw that we did not get Using the control nanothermostics, we do not get any non-specific activation of the, of the imaging agent, which means that this uh, probe is very specific to, uh, to, to, the immune uh, to the drug activation. Whereas when we use report on nanothermostics, we see that we get much higher activation of the, uh, the fluorescent signal uh, at, at different time points after the injections as compared to control nanothermostics. And when we quantified, we see that we get much higher tumor to normal tissue ratio when we in, uh, use the report on nanothermostics as compared to control nanothermostics, which means that we can not only deliver drug to the tumor, we can also monitor the response early on. Uh, this was very exciting. Next, we wanted to see was can we actually use it to differentiate between uh, resistant tumor and sensitive tumor. To do that, we designed an animal model where we had sensitive tumor on the right side and resistant tumor on the left side. And then again, we did different doses and image at different time points. And as you can see here, using report and diagnostics, we could indeed differentiate between uh, sensitive tumor and resistant tumor, where we saw much higher signal in the, in, in the sensitive tumor as compared to the resistant tumor. And again, we get much better tumor to normal tissue ratio in sensitive, sensitive tumor. So this was really exciting because this is the first time we can uh, show that we can not only monitor in real time whether the drug is working or not, but now we can also differentiate between uh, sensitive tumor and resistant tumor in real time. 
The next question was now can we use this for monitoring immunotherapy response. Uh, so to do that, we uh, designed a new reported neurothermostics where we conjugated anti-PD-1 antibody, which is an immunotherapy drug, uh, and then uh, NIR-based active imaging agent. We also used IgG as a control to show that we get much better response using immunotherapy drug as compared to control. And we can see here that we can get response as early as uh, three to five days uh, when we use reporter nathanostics as compared to uh, control reporter nathanostics. Now I would like to point out here that immunotherapy response takes longer time. Uh, so the activation is actually delayed as compared to chemotherapy drug, where we could, in, ke in case of chemotherapy drug, we could detect as early as 12 hours, whereas in case of immunotherapy drug, it took around three to five days uh, in, in uh, getting the signal. But when we compare it with uh, a current gold standard, which is PET-CT, we could not detect any difference uh, even early as three days or even seven days. So basically, these imaging techniques are not useful in uh, identifying if the tu uh, tumors are responding or not early on. So this is the first time we have shown that using an activatable imaging system, we can uh, measure if the uh, therapy, if, are, if, the, if the tumors are responding to the therapy or not. The next question is how do we adopt this technology for clinical setting? And that is exactly what uh, we are currently working on. We are developing uh, platforms that can be adopted for uh, clinical applications and that can be used for clinical, uh, uh, clinically usable imaging systems as well as biodegradable and biocompatible uh, components. And that can be used for easy uh, clinical translation. So just to summarize my talk, uh, we are working on addressing two important questions in cancer immunotherapy. Uh, can we identify uh, or develop nanoscale approaches that can uh, overcome tumor-induced immune suppression? And then also, can we uh, develop imaging platforms that can allow us to monitor the immunotherapy response uh, early on? Uh, so with, with that, I would like to thank uh, all the team members uh, who have been incredible in, uh, in, uh, in, in generating some of the data, as well as uh, the collaborators who supported me uh, throughout this uh, work and my funding agencies who have been kind enough to uh, believe in our work. And I'd like to thank you all for coming and again, uh, CNN for this great honor. Thank you.